this is Hatch. He's a field champion. Uh, he won three or four SRSs in his career. He, he won the uh, Mamba shootout that was $10,000. So he's uh, done everything we wanted him to do. Uh, he is uh, special. We got Hatch about three years ago. Uh, Hunter Hastings trained him and Danny Farmer had him and, and Roy was about to retire from running field trials and I'd watched Hatch over his career as a derby dog and, and just always kept my eyes on him. Uh, and he come available and, and so we drove to Texas one night and watched him run two series and he looked like a junior hunter is what he looked like and I said, Steph, get the check out. She goes, for that? Welcome to another special episode of Behind the Line here at the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. Hello everyone, I'm David Hamilton alongside Luke Kaur and Pat Burns. And our guest of this episode, he is no stranger to the Crown Championship, Lyle Steinman. This is your 14th time in the finals here at the Crown. And Ewan Hatch this year end up finishing fourth. Talk to us about Ewan Hatch's performance here at the Crown. Well, it was, uh had a game plan, and I seen Justin go up there and just completely annihilate this thing. And we had said, you know, yeah, we want the finals first, but anything short of winning the crown, we have failed. So he went up there and put that down. So the strategy changed a little bit. And then kind of through all these series, Hatch has done stuff, you know, that you go, okay, you take a deep breath, and I bailed him out, or he would bail me out. And he gets in that hut, and he lays down. And I go, this is not what I was thinking. Can't see the birds if he's laying down. I mean, he's as happy as a metal arc in there. <laughs> and then he comes out twice. And I'm going, okay, what, what's the gig there? Because he never comes out. And then I go, okay, now we got to take a gamble and try and shave that left snow goose decoy, which he turns hard left. And he wanted this poison bird for some reason real bad. And he'd seen all of them, you know, the other days. So I knew if I gave a right angle back cast, this was not going to work because I couldn't hit the whistle quick enough to stop him. So I gave the only thing I could was I gave a left angle back and I missed the decoy. And then from then on, I was shocked when he come back to it. He's never done that. Jordan will come back to him once in a while. But to see them come back, it, it kind of caught me off guard. But from then on, you know, the blind went fairly well score wise. And then, you know, he didn't see the right hand mark. And I mean, by then I knew I was sixth. So it was a deal where let's just get out of this thing. And, you know, we picked up three out of four and I really didn't take much time on the right hand bird. You know, let's just, let's just go on. We've taken, we've, we've tried to take a shot at it. It just didn't work. Uh, go on and, and let's regroup. And it is pretty well known that if we'd have won our eighth championship, I was going to retire and call it good. Uh, so I guess somebody doesn't want me to quit yet. <laughs> so. So coming into this event, um, you know, Hatch is one of those that everybody knows is one of the most well-rounded dogs that we have here. He's a field champion, he's a hunting retriever champion, he's a master hunter, um, the SRS champion. Yeah, out of the crew of dogs that you, that you brought, was he the one that you felt like you had confidence in to make it to the finals and have a shot at the crown? Yeah, I would say so. Last year we come with, I think, five or six dogs, and Jordan was the one. Jordan was, it was, it was her. I didn't have anybody else that looked that good. And she, you know, first two series last year, she was unbelievable. And the third and fourth series, you know, I walked past Steven on the, on the fourth series and he goes, you haven't had any help the last two series, have you? I said, not a drop. And, and you know, last year, Steven's dogs were unbelievable. And I mean, you have to have, as Pat knows, running nationals, you, mm -hmm. you, you know, you go, this is the dog. And, and Hatch is always going, you know, he gets better as it goes along. Uh, so yes and no. I mean, Hatch was there. You always, Jordan, you just don't know. AJ's so young, she doesn't know any better yet. Uh, Ducky, if Ducky catches fire, sh she can be hot. And then, you know, Tigger's, Tigger's first year, uh, he's a Canadian field champion, went nine series to 22 national. Uh, and Lauren said, I'm done, I can't have it, he won't do short birds, and, and he did real expectantly well, seventh or eighth or ninth or something like that. But, you know, next year's his year. You know, running hunt tests, six, seven, eight months, you just, you just can't get up, you can't put all the tools in the toolbox. 
the thing is, I hope these guys, for years I took it for granted. I'm gonna be in the finals with a shot to win, you know? And then there are a couple times I didn't make it. You know, I'm not taking this thing for granted at all, okay? And, and like I say, it, it's, it's, you'll see me take gambles here in a little bit. Uh, I have the right horse. Now I just gotta ride him to the end and, you know, uh, and there's been very few dogs that have led going into the finals and end up winning it. Very few. You know, ask Steven what Jack used to do to him, you know. Uh, and, if, and if I can go up there and do, you know, one of them runs like that, that that's, that's the pressure situation. You talked about Hatch got better as it went along. You've already discussed the fifth series with us, but I mean, in that fourth series, you had to be really pleased with Hatch, and, and you had to be pleased the first three leading into that fourth, yeah? Yeah, you, you run, you know, you take the first series here, uh, mid, I think 35 or 36, I thought we were a little high, okay? Uh, in the afternoon, that's mid to low 20s, okay? And you just got to hit the judge's timing. And I mean, it's, it's only human error. I mean, we get tired, they sit in these chairs, but you see some of these scores, you know, we ran fairly early, which we wanted to because we expected the heat. So, I mean, I was done at 11.30. So, um, second series, you get into this and you look at it and you go and you, and you start watching the judging. And like first series, they really just hit us hard. Second series, not so much. Third series, that's probably the most intense series that I've ever run. <laughs> as far as so many different game plans. And I mean, you know, you need to think ahead four or five casts on these dogs, but now you're, you're role playing in, in that series where Hatch, for some reason, went back instead of over. I'm going, okay, this is not what we wanted, you know. And then we come back with a water blind and we go, okay, if I can get to the first point, I'm letting him roll because we are, we are now in no man's land. This is Hatch, handled by Lyle Steinman. Hatch won Team of the Year a few years ago, and the Steinman family donated the, the winnings from their Team of the Year to the Noyes Children's Home in uh, uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. And folks, we are just now right past our halfway mark. Winston was the ninth dog to run, Hatch tenth, so nine down, nine to go, starting with, with Hatch here. Hatch and Law coming with a two-day total of 89. Hatch is one of those all-around dogs. He's an SRS champion, a field champion, hunting retriever champion, master hunter. He's kind of done it all. There's the first person to give a verbal over. And he dug back, didn't he? Yeah, and he got a, he got a, didn't get a great initial line. Pretty far left. Working through it. You know, it's one thing you think about those camera guys out there in the field with another holding blind. The camera guys out there in another holding blind can sometimes distract the dog and maybe think that that's another gun station and that might have had some something to do with sucking Hatch over there towards that direction. I'm surprised more dogs didn't dig back on that cast. I, I agree with that. Tell you, I'm surprised like it's taken right so many whistles to get through that first gap. What have we seen here? Winston right? and Chuck had a 48. Nice run. Wow, really good great. run. This should put them in first place. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Man. He's that patient was, that there, was, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think he knew he had to have a little risk after a little, that little start. That was a good job. Don't think he was happy with the beginning, but I'm sure he was happy with the finish there. Yeah, he recovered and got him back online. Once he got him online, the blind went smooth. So he took his handling gloves off. He had black gloves on. I wonder why. I don't know why. Sometimes you just gotta get a different feel. Yeah, you know, that's right. When it doesn't start off great, you just gotta change something. Yeah. Well. So that blind gave Chuck and Winston the lead with a 148? Okay. 
You think he was knowing him off the board? I think so. I think so. At first, I thought, is he going to send him with no hands on this blind? But he, he actually probably cued him on the poison bird and told him no bird again. Ah! I would. Yeah. Well, there's one that lined in pretty. Oh. He's dead at the dead at the bird now, Qu angling in just ever so slightly to the point. Was he gonna? Oof. Wow. Well. Yeah, so I'm taking a look. He away. obviously knew something about this dog because he yeah, didn't blow a whistle on the point. And that dog carried that beautifully. I think Lyle was the first handler that we've seen actually kind of point the dog out there and tell him no bird on that, too. It looks like it paid off. It did pay off, didn't it? You know, I'm wondering, like, do you think there's a risk if you, if you with this wind if you stop him on that point? That if you turn him around and, and they win that poison bird? I think it's, uh, you know, it just always depends on the momentum. I think he had that left to right momentum, so he was okay with it. I think well, if he you got that right nice, to left he? momentum, then you're going to put the dog in the scent cone, so then you have to blow the whistle. So, so basically you're saying it depends on the dog. That's right. <laughs> just like everything. <laughs> Don't you hate that? And I mean, I think he three or four whistled that water blind with that. And in the four series, again, you, you had so many 50 pointers, I think seven of them in that third, you go to the fourth and there wasn't any. And so you hate to say that was the series, but you take, you go back and look at some of these runs, like Hatch a 14 and a fourth. Well, Tigger had a 35, and truthfully, it should have been a 70 something. So the scoring kind of in that four series, they, they, not with the word nickel and dime you, but nickel and dime you, and then come back and didn't do anything, and then did not reward Legend or Hatch for swimming across the lake and staying in the water. You know, I, I asked Matt a little bit, I said, why didn't we go 100 or 50 or something? And then there was very little minimum on the left-hand mark. You know, I think it was five points, they said. That was should have been 20 or 50 for cheating that corner. So you, you and that was the phone calls I received, the guys were watching was, is you didn't reward the great jobs is the only thing I had. And, and here's the deal. After a while, you sit back and you watch and you go, here's my whistle. Because if you use it, you're done. And everybody knew that, so that's why you've seen a lot of running around and letting them hunt. Lyle, I've really enjoyed watching you this week. Thank you. I could watch your, your strategy. We had some fun talking about mm -hmm. order of pickups. We, and I just love it. Uh, and you know, you talked about that four series. Maybe you didn't get the score you were hoping for, but you have to be. That's one of those things you walk away with mm -hmm. feeling internally satisfied because you worked hard for that mm -hmm. maybe it didn't pay off as much as you like but I I was thrilled watching and I know what good dog work is and I saw some great dog work I want to I have got so many questions I'd sure. love to ask you but I watched your strategy on that water blind and I thought it was perfect and it's such a game of inches and, on, and I'm talking the fifth series water yeah. blind I watched you try to set up on the left edge of that corridor and, and set up a left-handed cast into the out-of-sight area. I mm -hmm. think one of the obviously most critical things there that maybe people don't realize is that you couldn't see the dog when he entered the big That's piece right. of water. So you really had to kind of set that up. Tell me a little bit more about your strategy on the approach to that re-entry. Well, he, he, he turns hard left, always. So after the strategy, my thought was to run right at that decoy and then try and move him over. I had him over a little bit when he exited the water. And of course, when you gave that, le that whistle sit, he's going to turn to the left. So which decoy, the right decoy left or the left, left one? Decoy. Okay, all right. I didn't want, I, he was fighting me down here on all the way down through there. And he, with him, if he flinches like this, he's looking at it. All right, he knows. And like on the water blind in the third, he never even looked at it. Okay. And that was a blind where I thought truthfully, 
we could have problems because he is going to turn left into the decoy, into the ATV in the third series, where you know the ATV is over here on the right edge of that right snow goose that he could turn. And when I got him up there, I go, okay, here's the deal. If I give a right angle back cast, that's going to push him into it. And okay. he wants it anyway. Okay. So I go, okay, this is, this is all week of working all year for one cast. So you said you were surprised he came back. Yes. But you blew a come in whistle on that spit. Was that an attempt to get inside the Turn. decoy? Yes, I tried, that's what I was trying to do. Didn't quite work there, did it? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. see the ripples. Do you think that coming whistle kind of put in his mind hunt mode a little bit and that's why he came back up on the spit? Most dogs yes, not him. Because that's what I thought watching yeah. it. Uh, I could have hit the whistle with him being out of sight knowing he's going to turn to the left and then I could give a, a I guess a no look back. Right. So what I would have done if I could have got him in that position was I'd have hit the whistle I'd have counted, knowing the wind's blowing right to left, that he is going to float. Okay. And then give the back cast, knowing he is going to turn to the left. I mean, I, that's that's fantastic. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it's fantastic. Sometimes it's not quite. Well, and and, and a lot of people at home watched and text and all this to, to Luke and all in the running. And you and I talked about it. This year alone, good is not good enough anymore. I mean, it is, I don't care if you're playing the, the Grands coming up next week, you're taking the Master National, you're taking all these Opens, the Derby National starts Monday, and you look at this and, and you ask guys, being good is not good enough, and Luke will tell you, you have to be great today. And I mean, and, and I don't know how much harder it can get, you know what I'm saying? And, and everybody's, Luke included, uh, we're looking for that great one. He's out there. So, and the, the window of opportunity is, is one cast. If I get the cast around the decoy, then I got a shot. But Lyle, I watch it. You wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's intense, Good. you know. Uh, and we'll go home and, and go back to training in the morning and, and gear them down for the Master National and stuff. And then after that, we'll go back to uh, what we do. Lyle, you have said a great week, you always do. You're 17-time crown qualifier. This is your 14th trip to the finals. You've been in this game a lot. You're the motivator for everybody. Guys like me coming in young, we always look up to you. You've, you've kind of undoubtedly become the guy to beat. Um, you know, before you can win, you want to beat Lyle. And we all know that you're no stranger to passing on education and, and motivating us and teaching us all the game. For somebody that's been to the crown so many times and been so successful at the crown, you, a lot of guys worry about the camera and all the other stuff going on. What would be your one piece of advice that you're going to give to somebody to get prepared once they've qualified? You know, just train for everything. I mean, there isn't anything. Who ever thought of running a blind under a lean-to? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going, well, of all the years, I've never seen that. And, and if you aren't on a scale of 0 to 10, if you're not an 11, with poison birds, you're going to have troubles. And that's become so part of the game of that. And, and I guess preparing mentally is probably the biggest thing is, you know, we got a mark, yeah, and we want to run blinds, but you know, showed this week, I got a text message this morning about it. it, looks like the crown was all about control. Well, yeah, it is all about control. Market control, blind control. Uh, mentally, whatever you have to do in your mind to block out all of this, you have to. Yeah. And you have to bottle those emotions and be willing to make a snap change. Or hey, this, like in the third series, <laughs> that blind blew my mind. I go, where are you going? You know, so then you change your game plan and you, you, you have to take gambles. Um, you know, Five years from now, nobody will ever know that Hatch was fourth in the crown, and I'm bad to say, nobody will remember he was second either. You know, uh, They just remember no different than the Super Bowl champion. They don't remember who played against the champion. They just remember who won. Um, 
preparation, uh, playing all different dog games will help you. We've seen that here. Uh, you know, and when River qualified in, and won the 2007 crown, she changed the game. Literally changed the game. She was the one that everybody talks about Jack, but River changed it. River come in there and she could do the short stuff, but she could go 600 yards. And then Jack come in and, and we started seeing these, these events become more difficult. You know, you've seen it, that's changed since you won. You know, um, it, it's just a mental game for preparing the dogs, whether blare the radio in the, in the trailers like we always do. Uh, getting them in different situations. We stopped in Arkansas and trained two days and we come over here and we trained a little bit. And what concerned me too about preparation is, is the, the heat. Next year we won't have to worry about it, okay? And like Tigger, he don't like hot. Born in Canada, you know, winters in Alabama, trains in the summer, and, and, and he can't take it. So you take next year, it shouldn't be a factor, but earlier in this week is hot. And that, that concerned me as far as, you know, mentally me, but mentally dog. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. Training the dogs is one thing, but training the people, that's really where it is. Because now they can be better to their dogs. Their dogs can trust them more, and they're gonna be more successful. And uh, I've done a lot of coaching of people at nationals, and it's really what turns me on, is, is putting together the dog-handler combination and helping them understand each other. And uh, well, success is bound to happen when you, when you can do that. Oh, I'd like to be. I'd like to do the things he does to me just in return favor. Because like I say, he comes up there, he wants to sit in the chair in the four series, that's why I put the chair down. Like generally, he's gonna jump in the chair and say, I got this, you run the birds, you know? So yeah, I'd like for once to, to be able to be him and switch and do the things he does to me. Well, as a coach, what would his advice say? say if Hatch was my coach, his advice to me would be? I think where we're at right now is, uh, I've got it. Let me take you home. We've touched on it a couple times here. You've made it to 17 crowns, 14 finals. You had said if you won, you were going to retire. You didn't win, so are we on the record here that we'll see you at the 2024 crown? You'll be back next year? Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> I, I, it messed with me for weeks. And Shannon and I talked about it in the interview is, is we've probably got eight young dogs that are four and under. And they are, they are great. They're not good. But they've all been handpicked and they've, you know, we went through a lot of dogs finding that. And we got some baby dogs, you know, Breck and Rip. Rip qualified over the weekend for the Derby National. He's 19 months old. He's not going to do any good, but he's go, he's going to go. He deserves to go. Um, so we'll get 14, 15 dogs qualified, but it goes back to, I'm now competing against guys, you know, I told Luke this, half my age. Well, now it's 40 years younger, <laughs> close to it, you know, 35, 40 years. Well, and I mean, my depth perception isn't what it was. My reaction time isn't what it was. I mean, it's just part of being there. And, and I told Shannon that I'm not at the beginning of my career. I'm not the middle of my career. I know exactly where I'm at. And, and as a person, when Clark come to join me, I said, here's the deal, I have no more ego. That's done left the building, okay? I don't care who handles that dog to the crown championship, okay? But it better say Castile Creek Kennel against the hat around the coat. And, and I started questioning my ability. I got enough horsepower, but do they have enough jockey? <laughs> and I just said, you know, Shannon, it, it may be time, you know, if yesterday would have went the way we planned, I, I would have felt good. and. And Clark knew that I'd hinted around that, you know, he'd, he'd never seen me this intense of wanting to win. Uh, but as a person, we have to put 
the best handler on that dog. And I can say I don't believe I've made any mistakes this week. I bailed Hatch out and caught a few times, you know, and the rest of them. But it was nice to know that I didn't cost him a chance to win. And that probably makes as a handler, Luke will say that, you know, if the dog can't do it, I can live with that. But if I do it, it, it it's going to eat you up for a year. We're glad to hear that you'll be back here in 2024. We'll see if you get your eighth crown championship next year. But this year, you and Hatch end up finishing fourth. Uh, good performance by you and Hatch, and we'll, we'll see you here uh, about a year from now. Thank you. Good job, Brother. See you soon.